Military personnel of Reddit, what's the best, weirdest, or funniest punishment you've seen handed down by a superior? USMC boot. One kid on Firewatch failed to notice the DI coming on deck, which means you immediately salute and report your post. So the DI ran up to the rifle rack, smacked it, and yelled, BAM! You're dead. He tried to respond, but was cut off by the DI. You're a ghost now. You can't talk. Go act like a ghost. Then the kid had to wander around the squad bay for the rest of his two-hour fire watch acting like a ghost, and he took that responsibility with stride. Plenty of ridiculous, Ooh, I'm a ghost, noises, and screwing with people's racks. We were all laughing our butts off for the next hour till our senior got mad. Here's another one that happened to me. An SDI from the squad bay above us told us that whenever he comes on deck and we call the greeting, we all have to squat until he tells us to get up. So we do. Now, one day, I'm out doing gear guard with a buddy. Apparently, the SDI came on deck and told everyone to stop squatting. Coming back from gear guard, I didn't know that. He comes on deck, I squat, and no one else is. I look around. I crack a smile, and that was the oh crap moment. Though, instead of just getting smoked, he told me he wanted me to sing. Side straddle hops and mountain climbers, Marine Corps push-ups, double timers. While doing the exercises I was singing. The tune? The wheels on the bus go round and round. So it goes into the duty hut and I start. At first I was quiet and wasn't into it, but I decided, screw it, let's go for it. So for the next 20 minutes, approximately, I was belching out wheels on the bus go round and round with those lyrics as loud as I could sing it while doing those exercises. The rest of my platoon was cleaning rifles. Everyone freaking lost it after a few minutes. Even the DIs. All three of them covered their faces and just stood there laughing. It was amazing. And a really, really good workout. <sighs> I was exhausted. Marine Boot Camp. We had a guy that somehow got his watch through the in dock. They take all your crap when you first get there. Well, the DIs found out he had it when they saw him wearing it one day, so they put him in the squad bay trash can and put the lid on it. Every time they walked by and kicked it, he'd pop out with his watch and yell, Sir, the time on deck is 0945! And then go back into his can like the freaking grouch from Sesame Street. It was really, really hard not to laugh at that. During my first deployment to Iraq as a 50 cal gunner, I had a salty sergeant for a team leader. Dude had been at the tip of the spear for the Iraq invasion, been to Baghdad in 2005, and now he was back for his third time in 2007. Not only was he intimidating, but he knew how to discipline your butt if you stepped out of line. I was a stupid, young, private first class with about a year in the army. I knew what was right and what was wrong, and thankfully, was able to get on his good side. Our driver though, nah uh He was a short, stupid specialist with a crust stash who recently did four years in Korea. This dude was so off, he even re-enlisted for it when his first stint was over. Dude was just freaking weird and gross. Always had an excuse for everything, nothing was ever his fault. He loved trying to pass the blame down my way, mostly because he outranked me. Our sergeant normally knew what was up and corrected him accordingly. Well, during a convoy security mission one day in southern Iraq, he hit a pothole. Like, a big one. Probably 20 foot long by 20 foot wide. Our sergeant flips out, asking what the heck he was doing. The driver tries blaming it on me, saying I never let him know it was there. Since I was the gunner, I had to make everything aware to him because I was the eyes and ears. The sergeant chews him out, saying it was the driver's fault he didn't avoid the pothole since I was up top scanning for threats. We were the lead vehicle, so it's not like this pothole was obscured by anything, especially since it was in broad daylight. The driver then starts saying, I don't know, sergeant. I couldn't see it because I'm short. He wasn't that short. Guy was maybe 5'7", give or take an inch. He wasn't paying attention and that's what the sergeant wanted to hear because it was the truth. Well, this irritates the heck out of our sergeant and he calls for the entire convoy, something like 20 semis, 6 Humvees, and 2 M1117 ASVs to halt. He then tells me to pass down an empty 50 caliber can. I do so with the quickness. The sergeant then passes the can to the driver and makes him use it as a booster seat. The driver protests, then my sergeant gives him a direct order to do so. The driver backs down and does it. At every gate to every base we approached, my sergeant made the driver open the door and show every guard what he was sitting on. 
Then he was forced to sing, "I'm a little teapot, me oh my, I sit on a high chair so we don't blow up and die." Most of the guards just laughed their butts off. A few radioed for other guards to come see it. He was the laughing stock of our battalion for months. A recruit in USMC boot camp thought he was special because he was an Eagle Scout. The drill instructor picked up on this, and during PT, took him into the woods and made him build a nest. Then he had to squat over it in order to keep his eggs warm. When we were heading to Iraq, we had to pass through Kuwait. Kuwait, being the transient hub for soldiers heading to and leaving Iraq, it is very chaotic. As a result of jet lag and the chaotic nature of Kuwait, my buddy had brought his weapon to the shower, but forgot to grab it on his way back to the tent. Shortly after he left, a sergeant came bursting through the door to see him sitting on his cot, messing around with his new video camera he had just purchased to bring on the deployment. His punishment was to get up, take his weapon and camera, and go sit in the community shower area and make sure no one else leaves their weapon in the shower for the night. So, what would you see when you went to take off your clothes to get in the shower? Was a fully dressed guy with a video camera just sitting there looking at you. There was a time when we made a private sweep all the sunshine off the sidewalks. It took the poor guy all day. One of the first days in basic, a guy in my platoon was standing at attention while having his room inspected by the instructor. It didn't matter how nice his room was because there was a large piece of fuzz slash fluff on his shirt that immediately drew the sergeant's attention. Imagine a female French Canadian sergeant with this accent. Recruit Bloggins, what is that on your shirt? Is it a fluffy? Yes, sergeant. Why is there a fluffy on your shirt, Bloggins? I must have missed it, sergeant. Missed it? It is so huge. How did you miss such a big fluffy? She picks it off of him. Hold out your hand. He holds out his hand and she places it in his palm. This is Mr. Fluffy. Find a home for him, like a pill bottle or something. From now on, whenever I want to see Mr. Fluffy, you must bring him to me. And so, for the rest of basic, every time the sergeant found a piece of fuzz, she would yell out, "Mr. Fluffy!" And Bloggins would have to march over to her and present Mr. Fluffy, and she would formally hand him the new piece of fuzz to add to Mr. Fluffy. There was heck to pay if he didn't have Mr. Fluffy with him at all times. Week one in Army basic training, we had a soldier ask for an omelet in chow line, which was not allowed because there was absolutely no time to make custom omelets for every single basic training soldier. The cooks started making the omelet when a drill sergeant asked what the heck was going on. The basic training soldier replied, "Go around, drill sergeant. I'm waiting on an omelet." Needless to say, this was the wrong thing to say and do week one in basic training. Our platoon motto was henceforth, "Go around, drill sergeant. I'm waiting on an omelet." And the basic training soldier was henceforth named Private Omelet. In the Marine Corps, when we really screwed up, we would go quote fishing. It is where you squat down like you're sitting in a chair and hold a shovel out in front of you in the air like a fishing pole. Then you just sit there for a long time. And if the shovel would start to droop down, my sergeant would grab the tip of the shovel and start to shake it and make me pretend I was really in the big one. One time, me and a buddy got in trouble together, so they made him fish and me flop around on the deck like a fish he had already caught for almost an hour. Now jump on the deck and flop like a fish. SpongeBob SquarePants. We were deployed in Iraq, and a guy was peeing in water bottles instead of walking to the bathroom at night. This is a common thing, but this guy wasn't getting rid of the bottles. He kept them underneath his cot for some reason. When the first sergeant found this out, he made the guy report to the commander while holding all of his pee bottles in a box in front of him. They tore into this guy while he was holding a box of his own urine. Guy in basic dropped the biggest turd you've ever seen in the commode. So he shows the drill sergeants, who then make him suit up in full combat gear, weapon and all, and guard it all night. The whole halt. Who goes there? Pretty amusing. Navy basic training. All of us are doing push-ups. When the instructor says down, everyone counts. When the instructor says up, one guy in particular, the screw up, is told to shout, "Would you like fries with that?" The instructor told him to get used to it, cause that's what he's gonna be saying for the rest of his life. Down, one, up. Would you like fries with that? Down, two, up. Would you like fries with that? There was a pool of tears from laughter on the floor below me. I wrote a bad check while stationed in Korea, two dollars and six cents over the limit. My punishment? 
To cut the parade field grass with scissors by morning. Had to cut the PT field with scissors, along with three other guys, because while we were buffing the floors, one of them somehow managed to get a candy bar and it fell out of his pocket in front of a drill. Everyone just froze and stared at the Snickers. It's like seeing a bus come at you in slow motion. You can't move. You can't speak. You just watch. Edit. Candy is strictly forbidden, along with sodas, snack foods, laptops, phones, etc. Your only belongings are what you are issued minus stationery and, depending on the drills you have, photos. For three or four months, you only eat what they feed you and you only do what they tell you. The food, though? Good lord, the food. Breakfast was freaking awesome, and dinner was usually extremely filling. You didn't go hungry at all. Since you signed on that dotted line, you signed away all privileges for three months. I was in a gender mixed company in basic. The third floor of the barracks was split with females on one half and males on the other. Males were not allowed in the female half and vice versa. My platoon was out back practicing throwing grenade bodies and a window on the female side of the third floor opened and a male sneaked out of the window onto the ledge. It was immediately obvious to everyone, including our drill sergeant, that he had been in there messing around with the female and a drill sergeant must have come down the hall forcing him to get out onto the ledge so he wouldn't get caught. Our drill sergeant looked at the guy for a minute and then yelled, really sarcastically, Don't do it, private. You have lots to live for. Then they put him on self unalive watch and made him hand over his belts and tie and shoelaces and everything that he could hang himself with and made him drag his newly bare mattress out into the hallway next to the fire guard desk and sleep out there every night until we graduated four weeks later. And they made his battle buddy sleep on the floor next to him for the first week. TLDR, Male cop messing around with female, treated like potential self-unalive for a remaining month of BCT. Officers can't punish soldiers with any punishment that doesn't follow guidelines. That said, they could be ordered some stupid things. My friend got ordered to move a box weighing about 50 pounds from the barracks to the shower every two minutes for two hours. The officer's reason for it was because he didn't know where to put it and was trying to decide if it should be at the barracks or the shower. In the end, he ended up telling him to load it up in the truck. Having to apply suntan lotion to a crap ton of large rocks so they quote, don't get sunburned, then having to flip every rock and reapply as needed. I once spent 12 hours cleaning screens on windows. That doesn't sound bad, does it? Try this. Find a small wire about the same gauge as the holes in your window screen, Gently push the wire through the hole in the screen to make sure that the hole is empty. Repeat for three minutes, then look away from the screen. Anything weird with your eyes? Try it for hours. Had a guy in a warehouse drop a pallet load of assorted nuts and bolts off a forklift. Boxes broke open, a hundred thousand little nuts and bolts everywhere of various sizes. He had to sweep them into a pile, repair the boxes, fit each nut to a screw to make sure of the size, The pile was then inspected, then he had to remove each nut from the screw and place the screw in the proper box, then place the nut in the proper box. Probably 25 or 50 per box, I don't remember. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Took three 12-hour days. He wasn't allowed to sit down. He had to bend over at the waist, pick up a tiny nut and screw, straighten up, screw them together, then bend over for another. More than a hundred thousand times. Think about it. During an inspection and basic training, a piece of lint was found in our dryer. I ordered to quote, handcuff the intruder and construct a detention facility where the intruder could be interrogated. I was to have an in-depth report on who he was, where he was from, and what he was doing in the building. My grandfather, who was a Korea veteran, had a story about a guy who kept getting things taken away from him as punishment. Apparently, before it was over, he had no socks or shoelaces, no underwear, and they took the inside part of his helmet. My brother told me that when he was in basic, a drill sergeant yelled at this guy to quote, beat his face, meaning to do push-ups. Said guy had no clue it meant that, and promptly punched himself in the face really, really hard and fell to the ground. The drill sergeant had to walk that one off, and my brother said you could hear him laughing hysterically as he walked behind a building. Not totally relevant, but I figured I'd share. Drill was smoking us one morning, 
and one of the other boots kept making karate sounds on the up on the push-ups. Drew was down with us, so he'd shout, down, hold it, to the left, and up, and you'd hear, in a long, low, guttural grunt. Eventually, everyone is laughing, including the drill, at the up sounds. Finally, he collapses in a fit of giggles and shouts, I hate all you suckers. Then he walks over to the other drill, who is snickering, and says, I quit. I can't smoke these suckers if they make me laugh. Didn't see him until after chow. Another from Basic was, A private was caught walking to the showers without wearing his clothes, just holding his towel and walking nude. The showers were in the same bay, and it was just males in the bay, but a female drill from another platoon came in and saw him and made him drop and give 50 push-ups while nude. A buddy of mine had a DI that would make anyone who did anything stupid chug a smart water, quote, in case it helps. A guy I worked with had a habit of falling asleep at his desk. He was a real scumbag. Unfortunately, he was also a one-star general son. They made him sit at his desk with one of those exercise yoga ball things. The sucker still fell asleep, but he would hit his head on the desk or fall over. He also decided to tell his supervisor he had an appointment, but instead took a nap in his room. They called the cops on him and had him arrested for dereliction of duty. Fun stuff. Got caught in basic with my iPod, and I ran around the camp for near two hours with my iPod over my head, shouting, I'm a stupid jerk for bringing my iPod in the field, as the quote, enemy, was attacking our camp. I then proceeded to put my iPod in a plastic bag, then taped it onto my helmet, and from there on, I responded to private iPod. When my instructor shouted play, I had to sing, skip, I had to switch songs, etc. It lasted two weeks even during the night when I had one to two hours to sleep. Throw away to protect the innocent. I was once in the Navy, stationed at Kings Bay, a Navy submarine and training base in rural southern Georgia, USA, a stone's throw away from Florida. Due to the, this base may or may not contain nuclear weapons, there is a Marine Security Detachment slash Battalion slash something stationed there as well. The majority of these poor sods were just out of Marine kill camp and were hot and heavy to go off to Middle Eastistan and quote, shoot them some towel heads. Unfortunately, they'd landed themselves in a swamp in rural southern Georgia. Needless to say, they typically made very poor choices. Their superiors, however, normally disciplined them well. Amongst the punishments I witnessed were the following. Number one, a group of Marines had decided to play soccer with an armadillo, killing it. They were forced to perform a full military funeral for the poor creature, then stand honor guard at its grave for a week, 24-7, in full dress uniform, in the middle of the summer. Remember, this is in a swamp in southern Georgia. Number two, I happened to be out early one Sunday morning, chain-smoking and drinking coffee outside of the Navy barracks, when an interesting sight came by. There were 13 Marines, Twelve of them were running and carrying a telephone pole on their shoulders. Six in front, six in back. The thirteenth man was in the middle of the pole, hanging from it, doing pull-ups, as the telephone pole was being carried by the other twelve running marines. After a certain number of pull-ups, he would swap with one of the carriers. Number three. Speaking of, this base may or may not contain nuclear weapons. The Marines had to do regular patrols, driving slowly around in Humvees or armored cars around the storage bunkers and the base at large. Apparently, there was a problem with the Marines in the vehicles falling asleep and running off the road. A brilliant NCO had the following great idea. Only one Marine would be in the vehicle, whilst the other Marine would be running behind it. If the vehicle were to start swaying off the road, the runner would awaken his driver comrade and they'd swap. It didn't take long, however, for this plan to fail. Patrol vehicle went off the road, crashed, and the Marine running stayed the course, smacking into the back of the vehicle and rendering himself unconscious. Some idiot gun bunny didn't check pressures before they took their piece out onto the field. Instead of being smart and zipping his lip, he said something stupid to the master gunny about the cooler temperatures causing the pressure to drop. For 13 hours the next day, he had to deflate every tire on every artillery piece, refill them to spec with a hand pump, and if anyone asked him what the heck he was doing, he had to yell, I am replacing the summer air in the tires with fresh winter air! When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. 
Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.